All right, so Wall Street quickly circling the wagons in this morning's PPI report, essentially saying, eh, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, of course, if it came in below consensus, there'd be confetti everywhere, right? In his May 10th report, my next guest credited uh, a few factors, three factors, in fact, for this rebound that we've uh, seen since April. I'm going to bring in Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. Hey, David, so you've got these things here, uh, a renewed a renew uh, acknowledgement, rather, the Fed has done with rate hikes. Which is not, which is saying, okay, we may not get cuts, but there won't be any hikes. Marginal improvement in financial markets, liquidity, good fundamental backdrop for corporate profits. Um, I guess the only thing I would wonder is the CPI tomorrow. If it was hot, I mean, how long can Jay Powell stave off the notion that maybe they may have to hike rates? Well, they don't have to hike rates because the inflation numbers are not going higher. This is all about the shelter number. It's all about the way they're measuring rents, which is a good 14 to 18 months behind real life. Nobody going out getting a new lease at a new apartment believes that rent prices are up 6% over what they were a year ago. So that deficiency in the, in the Fed numbers. Well, wouldn't that depend on where you live, though? I mean, because there, rent, there's no market rent. right now. When you look at national apartment list, when you look at Zillow, when you look at Realtor.com, there's about six different real-time metrics right. we use. All have anywhere from plus three to minus three. They're measuring it at plus six, and it's 34% of CPI. I believe the real CPI number over the last couple months that everyone calls hot right. is about 2.3% and going lower. Um, by the way, the PPI number this morning everyone's calling hot. When you took the revision of the last sure, two months, sure. it was 0.3%. But you can do that all the time, right? I mean, Wall Street picks and chooses. It feels like... What do you mean Wall Street? Well, Investors well, are right now... In the bond market. The folks, the folks that, that sort of the chattering class uh -huh. that, that sort of give the chance to immediately pounce on these sort of things always seem to say, hey, you know what, uh, find these things that make it good or, or bad, depending on uh, where, where, yeah. where we are. And it, it, I feel like we get set up be, by that because the, like tomorrow, if the number is hot, I think it's going to be hard to argue that away. Well, if the number comes in by hot, you mean a CPI higher, higher, higher than, expected. than expected. But but again, you have to look to the bond market. Okay, this is not Wall Street. This is not a chattering class. The bond market is still relatively high. The bond, the ten-year yield, is the still ten-year yield high. today is down it's three down, basis points. But I mean, points. it's still relatively high. I mean, a, a year ago, oh. most people were saying the bond, bond yields would be under four percent. Yeah. So if you get a four point five or four point four ten-year, and we think that's high, and that's pointing to inflation, uh, to me, if we don't get nominal GDP growth of 4 to 5 percent for the next 10 years. We have a very big problem. If you were at the Fed, then you'd be cutting rates right now. I, uh, the worst case, you want to be holding it in line. But the reason why he's going to end up cutting this year, the reason why I would cut is what no one wants to talk about, that they know there is a cliff of trillions of dollars of debt, resetting its rates, bank loans, leverage loans, commercial real estate, right. those rates. Everybody borrowed right. at low right. rates. Right. Some of those rates are coming due. If they think they've got a soft landing so far, that soft landing goes away real quick if rates have to come higher and people are resetting these loans. I want to talk to you real quick. Uh, I went a little long with... Uh, yeah. uh, Buybacks have been coming down as a percentage of the overall uh, composition in the market. Uh, dividends have been holding in there pretty good. You're a dividend guy. Is it time for dividends to shine? I mean, will we see dividends sort of, uh, in general, I know that you have your own specific way of finding ideas. So you, you follow the growth ideas. But in general, the dividend uh, play overall. Will this become more attractive for investors? Unfortunately, I think it will. And I don't want that because I don't care what everyone else is doing. I care what we're doing. And I don't want people to know about these great pockets of opportunities. We like being in the more unpopular sectors where right. better returns can be right. found. But here's the thing. Nobody was buying the stocks that are buying back shares because they consciously viewed it as a way to get cash back. The fact that that's coming down now is not going to be an immediate substitute into dividends. Ultimately, why dividends work is because they are come from better companies. Right. And then there are people who need the dividends. You can't eat stock buybacks. A dividend is real cash in your checking account. So there's a mechanical benefit that more and more people as they're aging, retiring, right. Right. need. But ultimately, there's no question that stock buybacks has been used as a way to fund employee compensation, executive compensation. It has not been a way to reward shareholders. I owe you a lot more time next time. Great stuff, Devin. I always appreciate it.